As of right now, Switzerland is one of the few countries in the world that provides voluntary death assistance services to adults, healthy and unhealthy, who choose to end their own lives. Such facilities are run by actual medical professionals who, in exchange for a lump sum of money, invite the customer into a room to provide the individual with the necessary medication to end their lives. For some context, most countries, such as the United States, have very strict laws on suicide, where a select group of people, such as those who are terminally ill or on the verge of death, can have the option to terminate their lives. There are a lot of legal and moral discussions on this sensitive topic, and it can make an already complex situation even more complicated. While some people believe it should be the person's right to decide when they should die, other people believe that such a decision should not be made by somebody who has possible mental disorders, as they could be deemed incapable of decision making. Because of these tight restrictions, a staggering number of people who wish to commit suicide have been flocking to countries like Switzerland to get help in dying when they want to. A relative case of this occurred back in February 2022 when two American sisters situated in Arizona went behind everyone's back and booked a trip to Switzerland. Prior to them actually venturing out, Lila Amori, 54 years old, and Susan Frazee, 49 years old, had been in active communication with Exit International, which is a global nonprofit organization that basically vouches for competent adults, irrespective of their health condition, to have access to death inducing medicine without needing permission for it. Founded by Dr. Philip Nishk, Exit boasts a good following of members and even has an active website that reflects up to date news on the status of voluntary assisted dying services all around the world. Nishk was initially contacted by the sisters in September 2020 when he claimed that the woman complained of medical frustrations that include chronic back pain and insomnia, as well as vertigo and clasped discs. Amari and Frazee were basically just tired of living, and being as close as they were to one another, dying together was non-negotiable. They had to die together. Describing their relationship akin to best friends, the two sisters revealed, a bit vaguely, that they had experienced a troubled period in their life, and they supported one another through and through. At this point in time, the sisters were actual members of EXIT and were really seeking suicide options. The first thing the doctor referred them to were so-called DIY books that provided different avenues and procedures one can try. But for some reason, possibly because they weren't terminally ill, the sisters worried that such procedures wouldn't go through and requested an alternative. Nishk then suggested a Swiss facility called Pegasus, which is one of the few clinics that don't require an individual to be terminally ill. In no time, the two women became members of Pegasus in March 2021 and had plans to actually travel to Switzerland just shortly after. This, of course, was delayed due to COVID-19 pandemic restrictions on traveling. The wait did not deter them, though. As soon as the travel restrictions were alleviated, they wasted no time in booking their death trip. On February 3rd, 2022, they boarded the plane to Basel, Switzerland to get to Pegasus's clinic. To be clear, the process of killing oneself through voluntary assistance death is not simple. The lengthy process for Pegasus, for example, requires an application, two payment installments costing 10000 each, one for a deposit, and one that covers funeral, cremation, and other pertaining fees. A psychiatric evaluation, an approval process, and for the individual seeking death to have a cosigner to confirm their identity. The clinic, when deciding to assist someone to end their lives, has to work with both local authorities and medical professionals to be able to approve these death applications. The right candidate, according to their website, is anyone who is at least 18 years or older, has a rational mind, and understands fully what they want and what they are getting into. They clarify that mental health is a vexed idea, and depending on what the condition is, those individuals can still possess the mental capacity to decide when to end their own lives. At the same token, the website makes it clear that it does not accept young people who suffer from any mental illnesses. I think their definition of any 
anyone young as anyone below the age of 18. So basically, Pegasus claims to accept any adult, 18 or older, who is sound and expresses an actual desire to experience death. Both Amari and Fraser fit the requirements and had their death appointment set for February 11. Having still not notified anyone about this arrangement, one of the sisters even contacted their only brother, Cal, the sole family member, a day before their death day in what was described as just a normal conversation that alluded to nothing as eventful as to what they were going to go through the next day. On that fateful day, the sisters went to the main clinic. Exactly how they died isn't publicly known, but according to the clinic's website, on the day of death, the individual is taken to a room known as the cocoon room, which is described as having soft lighting and comfortable lounging. After the medical professionals set up the intravenous line to the individual's vein, the client needs to tap or bump the machine themselves in order to inject the substance into their own body. The specific substance is known as nembutal, or sodium pentobarbital, which upon injection causes the individual to fall asleep within a minute and death proceeds rapidly afterwards. What is known and confirmed, however, is that the two women died on the same day, one after the other. After the two sisters haven't returned to the States, their friends, co-workers, and families were worried sick. They believed that they had possibly gotten kidnapped, or even worse. Switzerland actually reported their deaths to the United States already. They had the proof in the form of video and other documentation that the two women willingly wanted help dying. And that was that. Their families and friends were left in the dark by their sudden departure and did not know the question to why. But online, a debate was sparked. People believed that Pegasus and facilities alike serve a meaningful purpose and exist for the greater good. Adults, they argued, should be allowed to choose when to end their own lives because it's their life. They should have the autonomy and freedom to make such decisions and nobody should prevent them from deciding when to go and end their suffering. On the contrary, others believe that such suicide aiding facilities are morally wrong and people who decide to embark on this fatal path do so because they think there is no alternative remedy. Do you think adults, irrespective of their health status, status should be able to decide when they should end their lives? I'm eager to read your thoughts and opinion on this matter in the comment section below. I don't think there is a right or wrong answer. I hope you guys found this video informative and please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting content.